Okay, happy Sunday. Today we are back to hill training on Dartmoor. It's going to be more relaxed than last week, two weeks ago, because I'm doing less elevation. It's going to be about 900 metres of elevation, I think, across about 45 kilometres of distance. I've also planned in <laughs> two coffee slash cake stops, <laughs> because why not, you know? Like, what is the point in cycling if you're not going to stop for sustenance along the way? You don't want to run out of energy, and coffee and cake gives you gives you more incentive to get going. So the first place I've uh, planned into the route to go to is a little horse box cafe in the Hound Tour car park. Hound Tour is one of the major tours on Dartmoor. There are like 160 or something. But Hound was one of the most famous ones because it kind of looks like a hound from the background and it's linked to like Hound of the Baskervilles and things like that. So there's a horse box there called Rhythm and Bruise. And I'm going to stop there first. Hopefully it's there. It's not always there, but hopefully it will be. And then I'm going to carry on down to Ashburton and go back to Rafiki's, which is still the best cafe in the world and if you are around this area at all go to Rafiki's and Ashburton because it is wicked. Okay so less talking I'm gonna hang the laundry out because it's Sunday and then I'm gonna hit the road. <laughs> I often start my hilly rides on this bridle way because it gets me up to the north of the moor. Uh, but it's gravel and mud, and so not ideal for road tyres. I was a little bit worried about today was it was forecast to be 24 degrees in bright sunshine. And that's a bit hot. But actually, I'm cycling in a cloud which is really muggy, but actually really nice. I love this wall. It keeps me occupied going up this horrendous hill. For me, hill training is really just riding routes with a lot of hills, the steeper, the better sort of, but a lot of undulating, like punchy hills are quite good too. Oh, it's so humid today. It's definitely getting on towards biscuit and drink time. Oh, this is a hill. Almost at the top, so really, really great views. God, why do I do this to myself? It's not stuff. It's like miniature hill sprints. Not because the hill's miniature, because the length of time I'm doing the length of time I'm doing them for is miniature. From up here you can normally see Hay Tor, Hound Tor, through the valley, up to the the hills. But today you just see nothing at all. But I'll get back home, it'll be beautiful sunshine, just in the valley. Dartmoor's really got its own uh, eco-climate, no, what's the word, microclimate, there we go, got there eventually. It's got its own microclimate. It can be like 25 degrees of sunshine in the valley, and then you come up here and you're like, oh, it's snowing. <laughs> it's like a 400 metre difference. It's obviously not snowing today. It is about 22, 23 degrees. Oh, it must be like 99% humidity. I feel like I'm swimming more than cycling. This is practically an aquathlon. Is that what I want to say? No, aquabike. Aquabike. Uh... It's like bloody Narnia here. I can't see anything.
now the wind has begun. Oh dear, this is Dartmoor in August. God, this is crazy. The only problem is I've left my lights at home as apparently has every other cyclist on the road today. We've all been completely caught out by this because it is going to be really sunny off this hill, basically. But it's like it's just like looming out of the fog and so cars. A lot of cars aren't even running their lights, which is a bit weird. My lights are charging at home because it's supposed to be broad daylight. Whoops. But Rhythm and Blues have a terrible habit of not showing up in bad weather, which is a good business model, to be honest, but not great for me. I might have to go home. I'm not actually that far from home, and I'm sort of at the top of the hill, so it's like a free wheel down about six or seven miles. But I was going to take a much longer route. Uh, I was going to take a much longer route, but I just think this is dangerous, frankly. Even the car's going really slowly. I'm having to pull over for pretty much every one because I don't know how well they can see me. I am in bright yellow, but um, it's not very fun anymore. Okay, so in Rhythm and Bruises to Pence, they were there, but we opted not to stop because it's just windy and wet and we would get way too cold. So we're pushing on. Uh, to Ashburton and Rafiki's. Just had to do a bit of normally quite busy moorland stretch. It's definitely sharp watch. Definitely isn't what I want to be doing in this. But I finished it now so I'm going to cross over there. Just waiting for my partner to catch up. Man, it is bleak out here. One of the really weird things about fog this dense is that you can't tell the gradient of the road. So you don't know if you're about to go up or down. You have to really like listen to your legs, listen to the resistance coming through the pedals because you've just got no idea if the road's going up or down. It's so strange. take this moment to rest but also describe these things now I would have assumed that everybody knows what these are and that they grow everywhere but that's a very United Kingdom centric view and um, I met uh, some New Zealanders and they had no idea what they were they're called nettles and they couldn't believe that um, in our hedgerows and our footpaths and everything just grow these stinging plants and they <laughs> sting like depends how old they are I think sometimes they don't sting that badly and sometimes they sting really badly and it's really annoying you can find dock leaves here almost always nearby nettles and if you get stung by nettles which I have done many times today already because they just grow so far out um, then you can find a dock leaf and rub that over the sting and it will neutralise it. And they grow really symbiotically, I guess, I don't really know. But they're always close to each other, which is really cool. But, look. This is why you get stung a lot in summer. Nettles are everywhere and they grow voraciously. But yeah, so if you are not a native, um, and you come cycling here in summer, beware of the nettles, they will get you. It must be more or less at the top now, surely, surely.
made it, made it home. It is like a different day entirely out there. It is pure sunshine, <laughs> hot, 24 degrees, I guess. Um, it just, the, the weather did a complete 180. But like, as we came down into the valley, it was still pretty cloudy actually and wet. Gone to the cafe, had a coffee ate some banana and chocolate cake because, you know. Uh, and then the last, I don't know how long, maybe 45 minutes, maybe an hour back, was really hilly as well, but just completely different. Just really, really sunny, really hot um, and nice. So yeah, that was two extremely different weather types in <laughs> one ride. Uh, the whole ride was 45 kilometers 881 meters of elevation which i think that's pretty reasonable for 45 kilometers that's three and a half hours um that's pretty good hill training i would say i've got nothing to go on except for the fact that now my legs are tired so that seems like a productive um session <laughs> thanks for keeping me company on this ride it was an emotional roller coaster with that um, fog for sure, but I'm really glad that we carried on and got to the cafe because it's not a ride without a cafe stop. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.